I know people who've slept their way to the top. You know when it's shady. Like, if you have to be quiet about what you do, that's a pretty good sign. Yeah, maybe you just shouldn't do it. Like, if you want to tell your mom what you're doing, what you're doing, whatever venture you're in, if it's forcing you to act out of character, out, out of the fruits of the spirit, like, is this a worthwhile venture to be in? Only the Holy Spirit knows your real motives. He's the only one that can tell you, oh, you're doing this because you haven't healed that father wound of your dad. Motives, at the end of the day, they always play out. Not all money is good money. How deep should I go into this, Jason? Welcome to the Faith Hustle Podcast where we help young Christian entrepreneurs learn how to build their businesses and career God's way. My name is McQuenda, and I've been an entrepreneur for almost 10 years, and I've had the joy and the pleasure to be able to be mentored by um, successful entrepreneurs, business owners um, that were also fully devoted to Christ, had healthy relationships with their family, their spouses, and served the Lord. And, and that's honestly the type of leader I wanted to be. And so we felt that there was a need for voices that came from the church world that were not just successful, but successful in all areas of life. And we focus on five pillars here at Faith Hustle. We focus on humility. We focus on stewardship. We focus on generosity. We focus on being spirit led and integrity. And if those pillars, if those things sound like that resonates with you, we invite you to join this tribe of like-minded people going after the same thing um and we it, you know encourage you to subscribe to whether it's the youtube channel or any audio platform you might be listening to we are honored that you are here and we're excited to get into it and to grow together so on this episode i'm super excited i got my boy jason over here yo the producer extraordinaire and we're going to be going through um this is actually something the holy spirit gave me um, last week, um, on Saturdays, I like to just kind of go to a coffee shop and spend time with the Lord and, you know, work on different notes and, you know, the, the Lord will kind of give me some different thoughts. And, um, for today, we are going to be talking about what are your motives? What are your motives get going into business? What are your motives in your career? Um, and as I was pondering in this and, and thinking about it, you know, our motives drives our actions, right? You can't separate the two. You know, you can look at an action and you can almost always tie it to a motive, whether it was um, something that was premeditated or something that was in the heart that you had no idea. But there's always a motive and that motive is followed by an action. Um, and, you know, we're not c clever enough to separate them. That's just how we are as human beings. And, you know, for example, if your motive on the inside of you is to be greedy or it's to, you know, at all cost win, doesn't matter what, how, how it affects people, that's going to play out in actions. If your motive is um, to not grow, if you're just like, you know, I'm just going to coast, I'm not really trying to do that much, then your actions are going to show that you won't grow, right? Um, one of my friends, he always used to say, you are, you are going somewhere. You're growing. You're either growing further from your goal or you're growing towards your goal. But no matter what, you are growing. You are moving somewhere. And so if we're going to grow, we might as well grow in a positive way. Um, but motives matter. Motives drive our actions. And everyone has a motive. The question is, does it line up with God's word? Does not line up with what God says and what his true motives are? Is Are they pure? Um, and it has to go back to scripture. And so one of the scriptures I thought of as I was kind of studying this and, 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 and thinking about you was Colossians 1, 9 through 10. Um, and again, this is for those who are just starting out in business uh, or, or you might be an existing business owner. This is something to really hone in now before 
um, you know, you get years and years down the road and you got to fix some of your motives. It's easier to start in the, in the, in the right spot. Colossians 1, 9 through 10. I'm going to read this um, uh, real quick here. And it says, and so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, this is important, to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. And that that passage really stuck out to me of what we do matters right what we do matters how we walk the manner we walk in it either pleases god or it displeases him and in this passage it talks about several things which is going to be our outline for this conversation today of what god calls us to do but it matters how we do what we do matters you know how we handle our money matters what clients we work with who are who we work with matters not all money is good money you know, there, there are a lot of people that, you know, I, I can, I can go into, how deep should I go into this, Jason? Man, I don't know. Do we want to go, we want to go waist deep, ankle deep, or all the way in? I <laughs> all mean, the what, way what, in. <laughs> what we want to do. Waist deep, yeah, ankle exactly. deep, all the way in. Exactly. Um, okay. So I'll give you an example. Um, and I feel like I can be pretty strong on this. I know there are some saints that like to uh smoke of the natural herbs hallelujah and <laughs> i'm not one of those uh you know it's not legal here in texas so. no i am i'm not one of those saints at all uh, no i'm i'm uh, i'm i'm the sober uh saint that likes to have my mind yeah, vigilant Vigil- i think there's something in there kjv about yeah that. exactly yeah, yeah. I, I think so i think the appearance of evil i think that's a scripture mm. um anyways uh obviously you know if you're in a state that has legalized legalized marijuana Um, There are a ton of (laughs) dispensaries or CBD places, and I've I've gotten myself in situations where they've asked me, hey, can you, you know, make some video content for us or, you know, and they got a lot of cash (laughs) and Mm. and and I know folks that do stuff for them and I'm not shading on them or anything like that. Um, But it's funny. I did one project for one dispensary. I'll tell this story. It's for it was for a good buddy of mine. He did some work with this one in, in Detroit. Honestly, he didn't even do that much work for them. He was like, nah, I'm trying to get out of this. And he, he learned pretty quick. It's like, this is probably not the move anyways. But he got me this this job. It was a quick deal. And it was a promo video for a dispensary. <laughs> and this, I'm not going to say the name or anything like that. But I, I'd never been in one, never been near one. Um, it's not a place I like to frequent because usually they're near strip clubs and that's just not my, that's not my scene. Mm. You know, I prefer to just stay at home or yeah. to go to a coffee shop. We appreciate <laughs> you saying that. Yeah. I just had to make it clear, yeah, you yeah. know, praise God. And, uh, and so I get there, guy was, you know, security guard walks up to my door, taps the door. He's like, Hey, what flashes is going to be, what you doing here? And I'm like, I'm here to film a video. I swear. <laughs> I'm here. I, I'm, I'm here for a video. He's like, oh, and he he turned into such a nice guy. He's like, oh, come on in. I yeah. was like, why did you start out with that? Like, I get it, mm. but dang, and I was like a little Volkswagen Passat. What am I gonna do? <laughs> and anyways, I bring my little video gear in, and I'm filming, and I actually do do a pretty good job on the video. And uh, it's funny they they didn't even use it. I've never seen so much weed in my life, like in my life, and never seen so much weed. And that's probably the most weed I'll ever see in my life, but. I, I remember, like, and again, obviously, does God love everyone? Absolutely. I, I wasn't there to outreach or evangelize. But I, I think one, I didn't post it. I, I never posted it. Um, and one of the things I realized from that, uh, from that moment was, like, man, like, whether I want to admit it or not, like, that, that's attached to my name. Like, even though, you know, I'm, I'm not associated with it, I'm not an employee, you know, I just did the video. Because of my involvement, I'm associated with it. And, you know, obviously that's one example, but there are a lot of other examples of, you know, and I'm not saying you need to work with only holy people because if that was the case, you wouldn't have many clients <laughs> or, or, you know, or have much work. That's not the case because, uh, I mean, one of us, all of us are jacked up, but two, you know, in so many ways, like 
you know, we can look through scripture, you know, Daniel served wicked kings one by one. Um, Joseph sat at the right hand of Pharaoh. He wasn't a great guy. You know, like there's there, the, people in the Bible were used by God to serve people who were not godly. And God used that to show his glory and to, you know, to accomplish what he wanted to accomplish. So that happens all the time. But I would say for the majority of the time, how we make our money and, and like, and, and you know, you know, when it's shady, you know, when it's like, yeah, we're kind of, uh, we're not really crossing our T's, dying our eyes. It's a little like, if you have to be quiet about what you do, that's a pretty good sign that, yeah, maybe you just shouldn't do it. Like if you want to tell your mom what you're doing, there's a, a I think it's misnomer that what we do is separated from who we are. That and again, this, this is the whole reason for Faith Hustle. That this is why we only made it with one H. We're trying to show you that there is no separation, right? How our witness and and our faith is directly connected to what we do and how we do it, and all of it matters. And how and the reason why we do it, it matters. Um, and so I'll, I'll get off that, but I just wanted to make that point that like not all money is good money and. And again, it's, it's all connected to motives. You know, why is it, why is it secretive? Why do you have to kind of, you know, be a little squirmish when you talk about it? It's a good indicator that maybe that's not for you. Maybe that's something that's like, it might ruin not only just your witness to the outside world, it might be affecting your faith internally. You might just not see it yet, but it, it could be affecting a lot. And so there's some questions uh, that I wrote down based off of Colossians 1, that what we just read, that I think is always good to ask before you get into any new venture, maybe before you get a business partner, before you get, and, you know, I've had business partners, I've had different, you know, ventures that I've done. And these questions I think are essential based in scripture of your checklist of, you know, what you should be thinking about before you're getting into anything, or maybe you're in something right now and you should ask these questions. You should ask these questions to yourself. The first one, again, based off the scripture, is there anything in this that would not please the Lord? You know, in verse 10, it talks about, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. If you, you know, first of all, if you don't know if it is the first place to look to is his word, right? It, if there is there anything that doesn't line up with his word? Is there anything that is he would not be pleased with? And and again, it, whether it's compromising on things that you know is sin, is it compromising on whether it's lying? Like, like one of my mentors, we're, we're going to have him on the show eventually here, um, Dan Cobb. Um, he has literally a value system for his company. It's it's on his website. Um, and it says we'll never lie to or lie for a client. And you know, the moment we stop doing this is the moment we die. And I remember being an intern at his agency and, and being like, oh, man, it just it. One, I didn't realize how many people lied in advertising, which is a lot. <laughs> it's kind of based around it of putting lipstick on a pig. But that doesn't have to be the case. That might be the case for your industry, but that doesn't have to be the case for you. Right. You know, like. It could be, you know, cheating out somebody or, you know, it, it could be a lot of different scenarios. That's why it's important for us to stay in the word. Just as much as we're doing personal development, we got to stay in that word because that's going to be our litmus test of are we being li- aligned to his word and what we're doing. And again, it doesn't mean that you need to, this isn't a plea, you need to work for the church or or, or, or you need to do something that's got... Jesus on it. What it means is if there's blatant things that you know that God would not stamp and improve, then we have to, we have to, we have to ask ourselves, is this something worth pursuing? Uh, Jason, I'm curious what your thoughts on that is. Man, you know what I think about is, you know, back in the day, everybody used to have like Jesus, the Jesus fish in their logo. Yeah, did, yeah. Did we talk about this last time? We did. Time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, I'm sitting over here going, I feel like I talked about this already, but it's like, yo, why don't we just treat people the way that they're supposed to be treated? 
right and do what do the right thing you know like that why don't we just try that <laughs> uh because so many times we get so greedy we get so so hungry for money or the thing we're willing to compromise yes you know because <clears throat> it's a lot easier to blend in as a christian these mm. days yeah you know it and, is and and so because there's a there's a lot of nice people yes so you can still be a nice person oh yeah and not be christ-like and that's uh, and nice is not a fruit of the spirit by the way right i, I just right. I hope, I hope we all understand that yeah kindness yeah that's not the same as being nice Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. And I think we settle for that, right? Yeah, yeah. And and exactly what you're saying of like, it should be an obvious thing, but it's the motives, mm-hmm. right? It's like, you know, Paul even said like, I I do what I don't want to do, I you know, and like it's like I I don't know why. It's like, well, there's this thing called your flesh that's got to die. There's this thing called your th- this this old man, right? In Second Corinthians five, it says, you know you know, that, that we we're giving, we're a new creation. The old is gone. The old man the new has come, but that old man still likes to creep itself in. And you know, we're, we're, we are survival creatures by instinct. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with wanting more money. There's nothing wrong with growth. There's nothing wrong with wanting to scale. There's nothing wrong with that at all. If anything, I actually say it's, I would say it's biblical that and we're going to get it into future episodes. That stewardship is actually increased. So if you think, oh, I just want to coast, I just want to chill, I don't want a lot, it's actually selfish. And we can we'll, we'll we'll get into it in scripture of what backs that up. But so I'm not talking about coasting and just and just not you know not having any ambition. But why you do what you do matters. It's the whole reason why Lucifer was kicked out of heaven. He was a worship leader. He was doing his job, but the motives were wrong. He was doing it for his own glory unto himself right like i I actually think of there's there's another scripture where i believe it's in acts where um um i want to say it's acts 15 um paul and silas they are um on a mission and you know they're they're preaching and this lady just keeps bugging the heck out of them and it says like these these servants are the you know the Children of the Most High God. I forget what she said, but basically, like, they're anointed. They, these guys are it. And she kept saying it for, like, days and days and days. And finally, like, Paul gets sick of her, rebukes her. The spirit comes out of her. And and then they get thrown in jail because of it, because this lady made these people a lot of money. And what's crazy is, like, she was correct. They were sent from God. But it was the wrong spirit. It was the wrong motive. Something wasn't right. And here's the thing about motives. Only the Holy Spirit knows your real motives. He like he he's the only one that could tell you, oh, you're doing this because you haven't healed that father wound of your dad or or you're trying to win his approval or, you know, you're trying to prove this person wrong. This person talked all this crap about you and said back in middle school that you'll never be anything or that teacher that said you'll never be anything is like, oh, I'm going to show them. Or again, or even worse of like, hey, like, you know, you just so greedy wanting everything to yourself. Motives at the end of the day, they always play out. It's it's it might be hidden for a while, but they will show themselves in action. They'll show themselves how you treat your employees or your coworkers. If you cheat them or wrong them or I mean, I've I've heard crazy stories of, of employers just. Just straight up not paying their people or just just doing all these different corners and stuff. And again, if we think we can separate ourselves, you know, out of we, we can't from the from the same mouth proclaim proclaim Christ and yet at the same time do all these shady practices. It doesn't make sense. And so that's what I'm trying to get to that. And you have to examine in yourself. You know, is there anything in this that would not please the Lord? I, am I walking in a manner worthy of of the Lord? Um, and the first step to go to is you got to go to the word. The second question to ask yourself. Are you bearing fruit? Are you bearing fruit? And it says in the scripture in every good work. Um, what, what I mean, what I think about that is this. Is it evident? Because when I think of fruits, like it's usually pretty colorful right? You, it, it, you can, it's not bread, right? It's not going to just like blend in anywhere. 
you can see it from like a mile away. Um, there's a scripture and I, and I can't even take uh, credit for this. I, I heard a message from, uh, I believe his name is Philip Mitchell. He has a church in Atlanta, uh, 2819 church. Shout out to y'all. Um, and he broke down Luke 9 like I've never heard before, Jason, in my life. And Luke 9, 23, it, it says, you know, if anyone would come after me, he must first deny himself, take up his cross daily, follow me, right? And I always, you know, I always thought, yeah, you got to crucify your flesh. Or you got to, you know, and that was the extent of what I knew about that. But he was like, the actual practice of taking up your cross, so you think of Jesus, what he did. It was a public display saying this person is 100% guilty. Like they are like there's without a shadow of a doubt, whatever crime they did, it was guilty enough to go to the cross. And it's a it's literally a public sign of shame. And and it's to tell everybody this person, whatever they were a crime that, you know, they, they were on trial for. They are guilty. And he spent it. He was like, so this verse is almost like, is there enough evidence in your life to convict you that you are a follower of Christ? Is there enough fruit in your life that they can say from a mile away? Oh yeah. He's a follower. Cause remember we, we weren't always used to be called Christians. We were called followers of the way. And the word Christian, the name Christian was like, it was like a derogatory term. Like it was actually kind of like, Oh yeah, you're the guy that we killed. Like you remind us of that guy. Like it wasn't this like, you know, Oh yeah, this is who we are. It wasn't birthed out of that. Why, why I say, why, why am I saying all this? I'm not saying you need to go to work tomorrow with a, I love Jesus shirt or, I used to remember back in the day, they used to have like the pick Jesus and it was a guitar pick and like the Please, stick God, with stop. Jesus, stick with Jesus. It was drumsticks stop. and a cross. Oh dude. I mean, fish. I don't even know where the fishes came from. I guess fishers are men, but like, I don't know. I'm not saying you need to buy all the, I don't know, Maverick city merch or whatever elevation merch and just every day in, in your office, wear it. And, and so people know it's like, no, 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 no. I, I think it's, it's more or less, is there enough evidence of the actual fruits of the spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Is there enough evidence of that seen in your life without a shadow of a doubt? And whatever new venture that you're going into, it can be clear as day. Oh, this person is different. They, 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 they subscribe to a whole different philosophy, a whole different way, another value system that I am not. And again, part of it is, if you are, if whatever you're doing, whatever venture you're in, if it's forcing you to act out of character, out, out of the fruits of the spirit, we have to, we have to re-examine ourselves and like, is this a worthwhile venture to be in? Is this a worthwhile partner, business partner to be with again? So, cause again, it, it might not necessarily be the work you're doing. It could be who you're doing it with, who you picked as your bit. Cause I'll tell you what, a business partner, which that could be a whole nother episode, that is not something you pick lightly. Like you pray, you fast. If anyone's ever had a business party, you know, I had, I know more people who suggest to not have one than to have one. I've had friends that are, you know, still in lawsuits with, and this is not a, a, a take against business partners. I think business partners are great. Um, but you got to pray. You got to be aligned just like a marriage. Literally what it is is a marriage. You got to be aligned. And I'm not saying you both have to be Christians or all those different things. What I am saying, again, if you feel like you are being compromised in what you're doing and and you're not able to fully display, if I can't look at what you're doing and how you're doing it and say, oh, yeah, he, he's a believer. Easy. If I can't say that, if I got to I, I, I I've kind of come up with this term when I'm talking with my friends, especially girls that are talking to dudes and they're like, oh, I don't know, you know. I always say like you don't want the the head tilt. Like eh, I think he's Christian. Like uh, yeah, you know like you start hearing that you're like it's a rap. I already know what it is. You know <laughs> like it's like no, it's it's don't go. Don't don't go that path. Same way in this. If I got a head tilt of like I think he's a Christian. I think he's honoring God. If I have to guess, there's probably not evident. And 
that's a heart change. And sometimes that actually might be a physical change in what you're doing. But it's got to matter to you. If it doesn't matter to you, that shows where your motives are. Money matters more than your character. Money more matters more than your fruit. But the real question is what's going to remain, right? Because John 15 talks about that we will produce and bear fruit that lasts, that remains. It remains more than money. It remains more than all those different things. And if it matters to you, then it's going to be placed at the highest priority. And that's what we want to get at. Like, if I even said any of these things to you, you're like, ah, you know, it's not really that big a deal. Come on, man. It's a sign that something's got to get purified in here. And God exalts the humble, right? He's the one that exalts. Really what you're doing, you're just asking to take on all the burdens that God would have lifted off of you had you done it his way, right? And that's the whole goal of this podcast. Okay, bro. Actually, I have a story uh, <laughs> that it's a little... It's a, <laughs> I, you, we might cut this out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but you tell me because you don't know what I'm about to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so talking about like motives and like doing the right thing yeah. and all that kind of stuff, bro... I had somebody come up to me one time and they were like, you do video. And I was like, yeah, man, like video production, whatever you need, whatever. They were like social media stuff. I was like, yeah, yeah, do that, do that, do that, whatever. And they were like, listen, I have a buddy who, and this is a guy. Oh, boy. But he was like, hey, he is actually a porn star. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's got a personal brand. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I know. I'm like, I'm like, uh, you know, what's it? Is it What's what's going on? You know. Yeah. And uh, and he said he said, bro, he's like, you can make a ton of money, like a ton of money. And he's like, you don't gotta post it personally. Like no one ever <laughs> has to know. Like obviously, <laughs> yeah, obviously, yeah. like hello, yeah. you know. But it's yeah, like, you're, he's, you're, you're at a motel eight. No one, right, right, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no one ever know. Listen, I love the Lord so much. The yeah. answer was obviously immediately like, I don't think that's me. Yeah. But I'm not gonna lie. Like there was like a half a second where I'm like. Well, nobody will know. Mm. I, yeah, you know. I mean, yeah. listen. You don't ever see who's behind the camera, right? So you, you never know, right. you know. So it's like, ah, uh, and they're here local. It's like, yo, are you kidding? Yeah. But, nah, man. You know, when it comes down to it, it's like, not only when you get into to to situations where you compromise your own morals and your mm. own beliefs and your own stuff, the stuff like go like, yo, like I don't think that's. That's not it's it's not it's not just like okay I'm not pleasing God anymore. Like you start getting into situations where there's there, there's way more than what you asked for. Yes. You know? Oh, I got in it for the money, but oh crap, like there's drugs everywhere yes. and there's this and there's that. And it's like or if it's not even that extreme, if it's like what you were talking about, like you get into a situation where, you know, you're doing a video for something that you just kind of am not a super big fan of. Yeah. You're going to find yourself in in potentially even a worse situation. So yeah, bro. I, I obviously said no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's what we were yeah, waiting yeah. with faded breath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I, I said no. Uh, I'm here with you. Uh, <laughs> it was either that or you. So I was, I was wow. Like, no, wow. I'm, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> but bro, it's like yeah. You know how are we gonna how are we gonna make sure that like not only integrity is about like what you do when the doors close. Yes. So when no one else can know, no one else can see. Like, are you still the same person? Here's the thing, I, and I, I loved you said that, and I loved you went there because the reality is this: that might seem extreme to to people, but that's the temptations that are given. It's like, yeah, you can do this, but you gotta you gotta talk to so and so, or there's I know people who've slept their way to the top. I know people who have um, just done wild stuff of like, yeah, you gotta you gotta go with this person, and you gotta be around them. Because they're the ones that are going to open the doors for you. But with that comes, you got to hang out where they hang out and debauchery and all those different things. And you'll make the excuse, well, I'm just trying to level up. I'm just I'm just trying to make it. This is how you make it in this. And it's like, if, if you have to compromise who you are and what God has put in you and his word, it's not worth it. It's not something that you're going to want, one. And he can exalt you without it. And the reason why I know this is in the word. Like, that's literally Daniel and the Hebrew boys. They're like, you need to eat like this. You need to do this. And they're like, no, we're not. And guess what? 
we're actually going to come out better than the dudes that are doing it your way. And let's just put it to the test. And sure enough, God's way was right. And it's like, he will do it. And we've talked about this since episode one. The blessing of the Lord makes a man rich and adds no sorrow to it. And those type of opportunities. Jesus was tempted, right? With like, I'll give you everything. And it's like, it always seems fast. Because you never, in that moment, you never look about the downside. You're never thinking about, it's just like, oh man, like, I can get this, what I want, which is money, right now. It just might mean I might do a little something taboo, but eh. <laughs> and again, we're not thinking of the damage to our souls. We're not thinking of the legacy we're leaving to our families. We're not, we're not thinking of any of that. And that's the temptations that Jesus offers us every single time. But we have the choice, just like Jesus did. Are we going to choose what is convenient and what will satisfy our motives and desires? Or are we going to choose him, choose his way over our motives? That's that's the question. And it's got to be a personal thing. And I, I'm glad you made the right call. But honestly, again, like same thing with the weed business. It was like, man, there's I need the money. And it's always, it's never when it's like, oh, I'm loaded. I'm like, I'm good. It's always like, yeah, rent's going to be really tight mm -hmm. this month. And that would be really, you know what, guys? Nice. This is you provide. It's like, yeah. you start making up stuff. It's like, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. It's not worth it. Mm -mm. It's not worth it. And honestly, I, I wanted to say this. I had this in my notes. I didn't know when it would make sense to say it, but I do want to say this. And I, I think this is just generally, a, a, you know, in entrepreneur culture, which I love. I love personal development. I've I've read the Tony Robbins books. I've read uh, Jim Collins. I've read Rich Dad Poor Dad. I've read all, all you name it. I, I've I've read a lot of the the books. I subscribe to a lot of the different podcasts out there. They're great. I love it. Um, I think they're excellent resources. I believe in personal development. I believe you should be growing in yourself, in your skills, in your mindset. Right, like. Limited beliefs is a real thing. Like you will make as much money as you believe you are worthy of making. That is a true thing. But one thing I would caution and, and challenge you, the however amount of time you spend on personal development, books, podcasts, and all those things are great. If you spent double the amount of time, just double it, the amount of time in the word, you'll see the impact and and because genuinely i i i think we we kind of flip it where we kind of see the bible as just a personal development resource it's like no this thing is actually life-giving it has more power than any of that and by the way all those different resources you read they just kind of ripped the bible off and just didn't quote the verse <laughs> like yeah they're all biblical principles they're all biblical principles like like, uh, what was the, one of the ones, oh, like law of attraction. Like, man, there, there's just that law of attraction you tap into, man. And man, th things just come your way. It's like, bruh, it's called favor. Like that God made that. It's a law. Yes, it is. That God made that is founded on his word. The blessings of the Lord, they are attached to what you do in partnership with him and inviting in the laws that he's placed and the principles that he's placed. But it's like, don't get it twisted. Like. Honestly, I stopped reading a lot of personal development, but I still read them from time to time. But a lot of them, I'm like, man, I could just pull up Proverbs and be Gucci. Like, I could be good. Like, this is literally the same thing. <laughs> like, it's the same thing. Or, like, there's Law of Attraction. What's the other one? There's the, um, I, man, I, oh, I can't I, I think of them right now. There's, um, oh, 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 Manifesting. It's like, that's faith. Mm -hmm. That's faith. That's literally Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That it, manifesting, it's just faith. It's form without power. It's it's the principle without the relationship, right? You'll get what you want, but you'll miss him, right? Which is the whole point of all of it. It's supposed to point to him. And again, this is not a condemnation. Don't hear this from a, a bad place in my heart. What I'm saying is, there is so much we can tap into if we literally just get in this word. There is so much for our businesses, for our careers that we 
can thrive in even more so than any book from a man or any resource that, and again, all those things are great. I love them. I read them, but if we spent just as much time, if not more in the Holy word that he placed for us, it actually would do more good than, than, than us, you know, using any type of system or whatever. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, I just wanted to put that and, and the last note I'll say on this, this, you will always produce the fruit of what you consume the most God or not. And so if you're consuming something that is telling you, Hey, you know, it's a, it's all about you. Like you are the center of the universe. You're, you're going to produce that and you're probably going to be a jerk to people. You know, if you're it, it, whatever you're consuming the most, you will become you. We become like the one we behold. And again, it could be a good thing or a bad thing. It could be the Lord himself or it can be something else. Whatever you consume the most, you will become like. So don't be surprised if you if you see a correlation. OK, last thing. I know we're a little over time and we're, we're going to we're going to close here. That felt like a preacher just saying that. Yeah. I'm going to land the plane. This isn't a, a yeah. message. This is a podcast. Musicians, <laughs> musicians come. Because musicians. The musicians come. I just need musicians. a pad. Yeah. You know, it just Make makes me sound more real holy. spiritual. <laughs> Make it sound real spiritual. <laughs> Every preacher. I just yeah. need a pad just to sound more spiritual. Yeah. yeah. Come on. I'm landing the plane. Yeah. Just, 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 just stay with me for a few minutes here. Yeah. We're, 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 we're almost done. You can get to your potluck and you can get to mm. get to brunch. Sorry. I've, <laughs> you can tell I've been to church a lot. They all say the same thing. Anyways, the third point from Colossians 1, the scripture we read earlier, increasing in the knowledge of God. And I kind of already touched on this, but that's one of the questions to ask. Is my time with the Lord on a back burner because of this new venture? Now, mind you, I get time commitments. There there have been seasons of my life where I've had so much time to spend with the Lord, hours upon hours in a day. And COVID. I treasure those th- Yeah, COVID. Yeah. Oh, you kidding me? COVID. I was so spiritual during COVID. Oh, we was out here. I was doing four or five hour prayer walks. Mm. We were getting the walls of Jericho down. I'm we were, you, you know, I, me and Jesus were chilling. We were having a great. great time. I floated places. Yeah. <laughs> he just floated in I the room. Floated places. Yeah. I had communion for breakfast. <laughs> as my pastor likes to say, <laughs> I had communion for breakfast. Yeah. And floated. Yeah. Yeah, communion cereal with the yeah. blood. Oh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, every day. Uh, and yeah. I, it was amazing. I had a great time. And 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 I had so much time with the Lord. The most time I had spent with the Lord probably since I was a teenager. And obviously there are seasons where that's not always possible to give the same amount of time, right? If you're married, you got kids, or you're starting a new, you're, you're doing a startup. Like those beginning years, yeah, there are a lot. There are a, a lot of efforts, a lot of, you know, late nights it's just the nature of it or if you're in a you know a 90 day sprint maybe with your your work or with your you know with your business where you got to really you know lock in or it's end of quarter and you're really you got to get in the last um you know sales in or or objectives in so i i get that but if you see repeatedly i'm talking over seasons over years that your relationship with the lord's put on the back burner because of what you're doing that it's become second third fourth place then that's a sign that something's got to change um and it seems counterproductive but when you're advancing and you're trying to grow whatever you're doing or you're trying to start a new venture that's actually the time you need him the most that's actually the time where you need the most wisdom because the reality is this we have literally the Holy spirit on our side. We have the God of the universe. He is, he's not only with us, but he, the Holy spirit, you should read John 14 through 16. His description is he is there to guide us. He literally is called a guide. He's a helper. And if, why wouldn't I tap into the Holy spirit who knows every move before I make it, why would I not tap into that? First Corinthians two talks all about that of we have this mind of Christ that he, the spirit reveals to us the things that are hidden. And it's like, why would I not want that? 
And part of that is you have to give God your time. You have to wait on him and, and create space. And so honestly, just like anything, just like working out, whether it's, you know, eating a lunch or, you know, spending time with your, your spouse or, you know, whatever it might be, spending time with your kids and just the amount of time you put in your work, you should, with the same intentions, prioritize moments to just sit and rest in God's presence and let God speak to you about your business, what the next move you should make, you know, who you should call. Is this person a good person to work with? Would they be a good client or, or you know, you know what you should do next quarter? What, sh- what like when's the last time you've brought your quarterly goals to God? Have you or have they just been? Oh, yeah, it'd be great to hit 50 percent. It'd be great. God might be like, actually, why don't you make this your goal? It might seem counterproductive, but actually this domino effect is going to affect everything else. That can happen when you give God your time. And when you give God space to speak, because he's talking, we're just not listening a lot of the time. And I'm saying this for myself before us, before we started this pod, I was very frustrated in life, like extremely frustrated. And I I was on a road trip with my dad. We, we, we kind of spent some time together during uh, the Thanksgiving break and, uh, you know, went around Texas to some different cities, had a, had a ball, had a great time. And my dad's one of the wisest men I know. If you haven't heard it already, you'll hear many quotes that I've stolen from him. And um, I was asking my dad, like, Dad, what do I do? I feel stuck. I'm frustrated. I feel like, why did God send me here? What am I doing? You know, I was debating if I should do faith hustle or not. Like, it it was almost not a thing, to be honest with you. Um, Or, you know, I I was just, I, I was, had a lot of fear. And he told me, he said, McQuinda, I think the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you, you actually need to spend more time fasting and praying, like dedicate more hours in your week to just seeking the Lord. And at first it was like, I don't know how I'm going to make those hours, but somehow you just, you just find them and you're like, all right, I'm going to make this a priority. And I can tell you I'm doing this now because of the choice I made to lean in to the Lord, to seek him, to pray, to, to just listen. It, it's given me the courage I needed. It's given me even like so much of this is like, all right, what am I going to say? Like the times where I've slowed down, he's like, Oh, if you would have just asked me and just humbled yourself, quieted yourself, I got it for you. And there'll be so many times I'll be on a plane or, you know, going on a work trip and the Lord will just download. All right. This is, this is a podcast episode. This is about, reach out to this guest. Like we got some amazing guests coming up, like amazing guests. And a lot of it has just been the Holy spirit in the times I'm just with him. He's like, Hey, test me on the shoulder. Hey, I got this little insight for you for faith. Also do this, do this, do this. And he wants to do that for us. He longs to do that. He wants to be our business partner. He wants to be, but he's got to be invited. He's not just going to show up. He's not just going to force himself in. He has to be invited. And so with that, my encouragement to you is to really I, I one just read all Colossians one Colossians one is just fire. But if I can encourage you anything, really assess your motives. And again, that's something between you and the Lord. We see the fruit of what the motives really are, but only the Holy Spirit can tell you beforehand. Hey, you're actually going about this the wrong way. You're, you're doing this for a selfish reason. Only you know and the Lord know that. And I encourage you to assess it, to meditate on it, to figure out what what's causing that. And I promise you, it's going to put you at such a healthy place to grow, to do whatever venture the Lord's put on your heart or whatever, uh, you know, career path you're on. You will you will get all the things because God knows the desires of our heart, but it's connected to his way that we experience all the benefits that he offers of, of doing it his way. And so um, I hope this encouraged you. I had a great time. Jason, I think we had, we both had a great time. Yes. Great time. Always, always good just to dive in and, um, and to go deep. We love you guys. Thank you so much for tapping in with us again. Remember to subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of the faith hustle podcast. We hope you got some great value out of it and that it's going to help you 
in your journey of learning how to build God's way. If you want to join this tribe, this community that's on that same pursuit, we want to invite you to subscribe to all the audio platforms that you might listen to and to this YouTube channel. We're going to be putting out a lot more content just like this to help you to build your business God's way. So until next time, we'll see you soon.